Um, when I was shuffling this uh, spread out, what I, I got an image, and it was uh, it, it was really interesting. Um, first of all, I see you um, in the sky. Okay, so you're this young man in the sky, and uh, you have these mechanical wings on on either side of your arms, like on each arm. So you know the the they're they're they look almost like bat wings. Um, and you have to flap them and then on the bottom where your feet are it's almost like this unicycle where you have to pedal so and I, I think like it's a steering mechanism you have to pedal or move your your lower body in a certain way to steer yourself in a certain direction it was really strange and then on top around your arms these wings that you have to constantly um, flap around so that you can so that you don't fall and um, I feel almost like you're almost there. You're almost to your destination, but you're also getting a little bit tired. And you're just like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be able to keep doing this until I reach the, the destination. And then you get further and further and further away. And I still see you flapping your wings. And um, what's really, there are these straps near your ankles. And um, I feel like you, you have your luggage strapped to your ankles. Like I, I see boxes, I see bundles, like cloth bundles and boxes that are tethered to your legs. And they're also, you know, kind of weighing you down a little bit. Not much, but they, they are. Uh, there, there were several of those bundles, okay? But you're headed in your right direction. So when I saw that, that message, I, I feel almost like some of you are really, really contemplating some type of a uh, relocation geographical relocation and I feel almost like there's a sense of longing for something longing for something for a really long time wanting to be some somewhere else um, and I, I feel like you know a lot of the times um, and especially for you guys when you want something you go after it okay when you want something you without without needing to consult anybody you make these unilateral decision and you make these quick swift decisions and you go after what you want but this is something that is almost like a pipe dream it's like you've been wanting it for a very 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 long time um to make this change and i feel like you know the the weight of the practical world has really weighed down on you and have made this move or this next transition seem almost um, like it's our it's it's out of reach that's what it feels like to me like it's just a pipe dream like it's just out there it's something that you revert to um as a comfort as like that far away dream but for whatever reason you're not moving towards it and as an aries when i see an aries not going after what they want I feel like it's not because you don't want it enough. I just feel like you don't know how to get there. That's what it feels like to me. You don't know all the steps necessary that you need to take in order to get there. And that's the only that's the only time where you don't act. Is because you feel like you might not know how to it's it's too far away. I have to overcome all of these barriers. I have to plan these things out. I have to be very strategic. And so it, it lays there on the back burner and you're almost waiting for the right time and you're almost waiting for all the pieces to fall into place and you're not really acting on it, okay? So what I feel here is um, there are definitely, you know, practical responsibilities, obligations. Um, what I feel is like what you feel are things that you're obligated to do for another person. Those are the things that I feel that are really weighing you down. And I don't know why, but I feel like this sense of guilt, this sense of guilt. If I leave that person alone, they're not going to be able to find their way. They're going to struggle. So I need to help them. Okay. Whether or not they deserve the help, whether or not they are okay and capable on their own, I feel like it doesn't really matter in your head. Uh, you're, you're dealing with some guilt here. And in your head, it's like, 
they 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 need help. I'm going to help them, and uh, I need to get them back on their feet. Once they're back on their feet, then that's when you know I start doing me. But I don't know. I I feel like this process has been dragged on for many years, and I feel like it might be one of those you know feel good stories that you tell yourself, you know, to to justify why you are not pursuing your dreams. It's because of this other person. It's because I have to do all these things. There, there are reasons that you tell yourself to justify why you are still stuck in your predicament and why you're not really making changes. Okay, and then I'm also feeling some of you have made some really huge, major changes. Possibly something that was in the works since January, um, 2018, and now you're seeing the rewards of it. And I feel like it's not exactly what you want. It's not exactly what you envisioned. And I feel like, you know, you've already done it, so you're still going to stick with it, but you're trying to tweak things. I see somebody with like a monkey wrench going in and tighten the, the, the lug nuts, tighten the bolts to make a situation feel more secure, to make a situation feel more stable, which is great because uh, you're adaptable and you're able to make you're able to see these problems you're able to you know understand how things are joined together or linked up so that you can tighten the the nuts or the, the bolts so that things work seamlessly so you're definitely at a point where you're able to make connections and you're definitely at a point where i feel you know you're you're aware of the steps that are necessary that you need to take in order to achieve your dreams, okay? So this dream that might have been once upon a time very, very, very out of reach because of all these excuses, but also because of all these, you know, lack of um, being able to plan for it because it's so out of reach or so far away, or it just felt like, it was just, it, it just felt like ethereal, like it's out there, but you don't know how to practically grab hold of it. I feel like this is the year where you're going to be able to grab hold of it and you're able to find, um, it's, it's almost like the path that was very muddled before between you and your dream or the place that you want to be. It was very hazy, but now there is a clear path um, that you can take to get there, to be able to achieve what you want. But you might have to shed these unrealistic expectations. You also need to shed these um, the, the 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 responsibilities that you have taken on out of guilt. You also need to shed a lot of I feel material things in your life in order for you to travel light, in order for you to swiftly fly to your destination. Okay, so. What I'm seeing here is, um, first of all, there is a job and, you know, you guys are really, really good workers. You guys are amazing good workers. And um, I don't think I've ever met somebody that has complained about the work ethics of an Aries, okay? You guys get things done. You guys are serious about your responsibilities. People will never say that an Aries person is lazy or, you know, opportunistic and, um, you know, don't do their work. People would never say that about you. So you guys are really hard working and, um, you overexert yourself too. And you know, you, you do things until they are done. So I feel like you guys have really the, the work ethics down to a T and wherever you go, your employers, your, your high, the higher ups will always value your work ethics. Okay. They, they know that you're the person, the man or the woman to get things done. And they know that you have huge capabilities and potential. And then on top of that, you're internally motivated and driven. So that basically means to me, um, you find opportunities to advance. And so what I feel for many of you is um, I see this fear. If I were to move from this company to the next company, it's not going to be a lateral transfer. I have to start again from the bottom up. 
And like I mentioned before, you have really good work ethics. Higher ups will always appreciate your work ethics. So you're always going to climb that corporate ladder pretty fast. And so even if you have to take a pay cut to be in the ideal location, to have that dream job or to be in that dream location, it's worth the risk. It's worth taking because in no time, you're going to be able to advance up that career ladder pretty quickly. And so don't think of it as, you know, a step down. Think of it as a change of scenery. Think of it as learning new skills. Think of it as, you know, this is the place I've always wanted to be. This is the company that I've always wanted to work for. And as long as we are doing something that we're happy, it doesn't really matter the title. It doesn't really matter the you know, starting over or having to start at the bottom with the totem pole, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so prestige and position and all these titles and all these corporate things, they don't really matter. It just matters that you're happy and it just matters that you grab hold of your dreams and not let these titles and positions and, you know, that corner office and uh, what people say when you're taking a demotion, it doesn't matter. And so... I feel like those were the things that were preventing you from taking that that job with the company that you wanted or to relocate to a new area that you've always dreamed of. And then I'm also uh, feeling as well, <clears throat> when I mentioned guilt, um, family members, I feel like there's somebody who's ailing, somebody who's sick, somebody who is, um, I'm getting delusional. Okay, and uh, somebody who's delusional, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. What I feel is it's somebody that can't take care of practical responsibilities. It's almost like if you leave them alone at home, you worry. And then I'm also seeing somebody who is forgetful. So it could be, you know, early stages of dementia. They can't be left alone. They forget to eat. They forget to take their medicine. They leave the stove on and God forbid the house burns down. So it's somebody that you can't really trust because you're not really sure of their cognitive abilities or their abilities to take care of themselves or their ability to, you know, just be safe on their own. And then I also feel somebody who might be dealing with some mental health issues as well as physical health issues that's really limiting their mobility. So so this is somebody that's heavily in your midst. It could be a, a, a parent. It could be a sibling. It could be like a family member, a child, even a special needs child. And um, I, I feel like there's guilt from your end. And, you know, there, it, it's, there's a lot of love here. There's a lot of love. But I also feel like um, you, you, you wonder, you wonder, like... Um, Life would be very different if, um, you know, if this person was not in my life. And I'm sorry to say, I, I see that, you know, it's, you love this person. So it's not like you wouldn't trade it for the world. You wouldn't trade this experience for the world. But sometimes you wonder, and then you wonder what your life would look like. And then I also feel like nothing is really stopping you because, um, Whatever the circumstances is, I feel like there is a way to make it work. And that way is going to be coming into the picture for you. What you have here is the star card, wish fulfillment. So you have some really major inspiring things. Like it's a, turn, um, a chain of events that will happen to allow you to reach your destination, but also to get whatever it is that you've been yearning for for a very long time. And you have the death card, which signals to me change. And when these two major arcana come out in the spread, it basically means change is coming. So, you know, you, you need to travel light. You need to be able to prepare for it. So, you know, no more excuses, no more talks about, you know, no more doing things out of obligation or out of guilt. And especially, you know, you, when you are doing things for other people, make sure that they are deserving of it. And especially make sure that they are, um, that, that they, if they can't do it for themselves, then yes, if it's a special needs child, it's an elderly parent, yes. But I feel as well, 
you're doing things for other people that can take care of themselves. And that's where I feel like these might just be things that you tell yourself. Oh, you know, I have to do this, I have to do, do that. And that's really why I'm not moving. So cutting through all of those self-delusions, cutting through all of those excuses that we tell ourselves to not do something, okay? Um, I see a big energy of New Year's resolution and a lot of people um, trying to get into shape, okay? So saying no to a lot of drinking, a lot of eating, uh, trying not to eat out as much as well because you're watching your weight, trying to get yourself in shape, trying to exercise, trying to diet. Um, I see a lot of people like doing a lot of um, cleansing, like um, maybe a vegetarian, vegan cleanse, or even like um, juicing and dieting and things like that. Going to the gym, joining a new gym, um, getting a lot more physically active, and I see a lot of exercise uh, classes. So if you've been going to the gym and you know you exercise on your own, now you're just like maybe it's going to be better if I exercise in a class. So maybe that social pressure will motivate me. And I feel like you would be right. You would be right because there is that sense of internal competition that keeps everybody on the same page, that keeps everybody motivated and it keeps everybody accountable so that everyone is there um, at the same time. So I, I feel like that would actually be a really good motivation. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of changes happening in your work environment. So if you have been thinking about leaving or if you have been thinking about looking at other options, I highly urge you to do it right now because I see some reshaping and restructuring in your work environment. And I feel like positions that have been very stable in the past are now being contracted out. Okay, so for example, for example, um, if in the past, let, let's just say you work for a transportation company in the past, they have drivers that are, you know, salaried. Now they're hiring people on a contract basis or they're hiring a new wave of people that are contractors. So they, they handle certain contracts and or they are contractors where they could be easily laid off there the job is also not unionized and i i just feel like you know job security might be um on the forefront here as we come into january and i feel like this is not news to you this is something that you're aware of i have also seen a lot of people within the past five weeks so from uh, november as i'm doing this reading so since november you have been tweaking you know, once again, that um, monkey wrench, um, tightening those lug nuts, tweaking your resume, fixing your resume, editing your resume, proofreading it, adding some final touches to it. If you've attended some type of a seminar or if you have led some type of a seminar or if you have even facilitated some type of a focus group, you're also putting those things in your resume. You're editing, you're revising. And then I'm also seeing you might have scoped out that job market in the new location that you're fond of just to see what the salary is like, what the cost of living is like, what people are doing, uh, what the job market is like. So you're, you know, scoping out, scouting new territory. So I definitely feel like it's time for some major change. It's going to come in sooner rather than later. So I feel like you need to kind of like keep yourself, you know, very nimble on your feet. Like those, um, the, the football players, when they do those drills and they do those things where, you know, they're, they need to be very, very nimble on their toes, on their feet. That's what you need to be like, okay? You need to be in top shape physically, mentally, and I also feel like emotionally. I don't see things in here that indicate to me, you know, that you're not emotionally unstable, but I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is. And I also feel like your patience is kind of running thin with them. Um, but I feel like you need to keep yourself very, very um, ready to change direction at any minute. And the changes are coming in a lot faster than you think. So if you've been trying to, you know, sell that house, and you've been putting it off 
Do it now. If you've been trying to look at other opportunities, do it now. Don't put it off any longer. Okay, so those pipe dreams are now becoming reality. They're getting closer and closer to you. It's almost like you're getting closer and closer. You're flapping your wings. You're getting closer and closer to that next mountain, to that destination. And the time is getting shorter. All right? I'm going to leave it at that.